Alright, we're going to Exodus 23, 6, 14 through 16. After that, Exodus 34. We're going to get to it. I got this up here too called the uh, Hold Me Quick Source Bible Atlas. I'm going to read out here about Pentecost as well. So we can get some understanding. Alright, right here. I'm on page. Yeah, you got one that too, don't you? Yeah. Alright, I'm on page, I'm on quick source, page 127. Yeah, read, read that right there. Uh, now we got to read about the Feast of Weeks right there. 127. 127, and you see that the column all the way to the far right? Yeah, significant. This, this right here is called, it says Jewish Feast and Festivals. And uh, they got the name on there, the month and date, the, the reference, and then they got the significance. He gonna read the significance for them. About the Feast of Weeks. Pentecost. All right, uh, page 127, under uh, significance, with also meaning, it says, commemorates the giving of the law at Mount Sinai. Oh! Includes a day of first fruits for the wheat harvest. We got the wheat harvest. We're talking about bringing the bread in. No, they can make bread out of wheat. We got barley harvest, too. That's doing Passover. Right. So this says that the Feast of Weeks, or Pentecost, commemorates the giving of the law in Mount Sinai. Mm. Now let's see if we can connect that biblical. How do we show that? Who know what month we in biblical? Now I mean by number. You ain't got to name it by biblical name. What month are we in? Third month. Third month. Remember that? We are in the third month since Passover. First month was April. Right? Second mm -hmm. month was May. Third month was June. That's where we at. So when it commemorates the giving of the law at Mount Sinai, is there any way we can connect that biblically and show they was getting the law at Mount Sinai in the third month? We're going to get into it. Let's get this exit this real quick. Hey, uh, anybody, y'all, uh, help them shorty right there. I'm going to let them handle that juice right there. So whoever the shorty that is, going to fix that up, hook that up, play that song. We're going to go Exodus 23 first. Exodus 23. We're going to go back. We're going to go Exodus 19, Exodus 20. We're going to work up to that. I'm going to get to Exodus 23, which is named the feast right now. But remember that. It says it commemorates the giving of the law at Mount Sinai. All right? Keep that in mind. Let's get it, bro. Exodus chapter 23, starting at verse 14. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Uh. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. You just kept it. It was Passover. All right, come on. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as I command thee. In the, de in the time appointed of the month of Bill, of Bill, for in it thou camest out of Egypt, and none shall appear before me in it. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field. That's what we in right now. Come on. And the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Oh, all our harvest festivals will throw a feast. We thank the most high. That's right. The one we get is the second one you just mentioned right there. All right? Next script, Exodus 34, 22 to 35. We're going to get to the meeting with it. You said, well, I got that answer for you. The yeah, idea, that's how I'm guessing you do. Hold up. Hold up. I'm seeing the crowd with that. I bet you do. <laughs> yes, sir. Exodus 34, go out of verse 22. We're going to read it out. All right. Book of Exodus, chapter 34, verse 22. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the... chapter 34, verse 22. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks, of the first fruit of wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Thrice in the year shall all your men children appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. For I will cast out the nations before thee, and enlarge thy borders, neither shall any man desire thy land. 
when thou shalt go up to appear before the Lord thy God the rice in the year. The commandments that you're supposed to be doing. That's right. right. Come on, brother. Verse 25. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven, mm. neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of, of the Passover be left unto the morning. Right. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. See what he said? The first of the first fruits of your land, that's the Lord's. Right. All right, come on. Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. Right. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tender of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. So I'm going to write these words down. I've made a covenant with you and Israel. That's write right. these words down. Right? Remember that word. Words come off tongues. Remember that. Come on, brother. Verse 28. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. Mm. And he did neither eat bread nor drink water. Mm. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, mm. the Ten Commandments. The Lord, these are the Lord's commandments. He gave them to Moses and then he wrote. All right, and this is the second time. Remember, he had to come down and destroy the first one. He was tripping. <laughs> All right? Come on, brother. Verse 29. Mm. And it came to pass when Moses came down from the Mount Sinai with the two tables of the testimonies in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses was not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. He was in the presence of the Lord. He so right. down, his whole countenance is wrong. Straight wrong. He just went through 40 days and 40 nights of getting divine oracles from God on the mountain. So naturally, his whole, like the Lord transfigured, Christ was transfigured on that mountain. Right? Moses was shining his way. Shining. All right, come on, brother. Verse 30. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh unto him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Mm. Until, I'm sorry, until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. And when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off. Mm. And until he came out, and he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. All right, now, let's go to Exodus, the 19th chapter. You see, Moses was dealing with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights. That's right. He come down off the mountain and his whole face and everything is shining on him. <laughs> yeah, also back to what uh, Brother Adonai had brought about the covering. Also, because we, we know he did it um, because of the glory that was shown upon him. And also notice, even Moses obeyed the law, which wasn't even written at that point, to uncover his cup. You know what I'm talking about? Because he had shine, showed that he took the veil off when he went into the prison of the Lord, because following again 1 Corinthians 11 said a man's head should be uncovered. Yeah. When he's dealing with the most high. Just want to bring it out as a right. building which you had already spoken. Now notice, remember, we in the third month, right? Third month. Now let's read about what happened in the third month after we came out of Egypt. Exodus the 19th chapter. We're gonna build this right on up. That's right. Yes, right on. The book of Exodus, chapter 19, verse 1. In the third month, when the children uh, Exodus 19 chapter. <laughs> 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 Get to it. <laughs> you right, you already you know. know. Either that or he just used to drive the sticks here. Get to it. All this is leading up to them fiery tongues you read about in Acts 2. Everybody so there? This feast commemorates the giving of the law. We're going to go read in particular what happened with Moses. Oh, we <laughs> Alright, so let's get it. Let's get some understanding. Right. The book of Exodus, chapter 19, verse 1. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, 
The same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. So we're talking about the third month, which we are in now. Mm. All right, come on. Or so, but they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness. And there Israel camped before the, before the mountain. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mount, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Oh, like you see what I just did, right? You know, you know what it is. <laughs> All right, come on, brother. Verse five. Now, therefore, if 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 one time if biggest two letter word exists. Mm, if come on, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then shall ye be a peculiar treasure unto me. Above all people, for all the earth is mine. And he said, special spot for the children of Israel. Above all people. Right? That's what he says. Above all people, something special about God's people. Right? When we acting like anybody else, ain't nothing special about us. That's why we read that word, if. Right, we'll skip right over there. Oh, we God's people. What about if? Right. 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 Y'all kingdom of priests, a holy nation, a set up white nation. Totally dedicated to your God. Tell them this. Right. Come on, brother. Verse 7. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Mm. And Moses returned these words of the people unto the Lord. We agreed to it. Whatever the Lord commanded, we die. Covenant. So we get into a, what's called a marriage covenant. Right. right. Huh? See Read. that? Whatever you say, Lord, we die. Your forefather said you was dying. That's right. So regardless, regardless if you like it or not, the Lord coming to collect you. Right. Hopefully you're on the right side of it. Right. Alright, come on, brother. Verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. What kind of cloud? A, I come to thee in a thick cloud, uh, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. Mm. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, mm. and be ready against the third day, for the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon the Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that, ye may, that you go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall be surely put to death. There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned. Or shot through whether it be, <laughs> or shot through whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. Mm -hmm. When the trumpet sounded long, they shall come up to the mountain. Mm -hmm. And Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day, right. and come not at your wives. Why you put that man? Brother shot an answer out back there. I don't know. Don't speak with your wives, right? The Lord said be food for a multiply. Mm. White time. White time. Yeah, it's the same time. No time on the footies right now. Hey, okay. It ain't the time, right? Give me something deeper though. Why else? Why would the Lord be saying, don't come at your wives? 
He kept saying, sanctify yourself and wash your clothes. I, I see you back there, Gail. I know what you're doing. I'm coming right through. What'd you, what'd you say, bro? Play between. Sister, what you, what you got back there? I was embarrassed because when a man sees going from him, he's going to be. You see that? Uh, now check yeah. this out. Work out really good at it. There you go. Leviticus the 15th chapter. Yeah. Leviticus the 15th chapter. The, the laws of cleansing yourself. After you have sexual relations, you're supposed to clean yourself. Right? And point, after one seed come out of you, you're unclean until the evening, following the evening or the evening. So that's what he was saying. You, he kept telling you, clean yourself, sanctify yourself, and don't come into wild. Right? After the seed go forth about you, you're unclean in the eyes of God until the evening. That's why you guys can do what you do. For those, I mean, never mind. I ain't gonna do it, man. I ain't gonna do it, man. I ain't gonna do it, man. But you do naturally do that. You naturally clean yourself. You feel me? That's the law of the Bible. That's right. You're supposed to be doing it. Alright? Alright, what verse we have for? Verse 14 again. <laughs> uh, I mean, verse 15 again. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day, come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that if. I got, no, I got a page missing. It came out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. Wait, that's verse 16, bro. Yeah, verse 16. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings. And a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Mm -hmm. The presence of the Lord was nothing that you like that you didn't hear or I wasn't paying attention. It was very loud. Mm -hmm. right, the Lord showed up in the cloud, with the earth quaking, trumpets going off. You see that rumbling going on? They're like, man, what is going on? That's right. All right, come on, brother. Verse 17, right? And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at, at, the, at, the, at the nether part of the mountain. And the Mount Sinai was all together on a smoke. On a what? On a smoke. That means fire was around. That's right. Smoke is the byproduct of the fire. You see that? So the mountain was on the fire? Wow. Come on, bro. Because the Lord descended upon it in fire. In what? In fire. Okay, this is this is the third month. This is what you get your Pentecost for. That's right. Right? Commemorate you getting the law at Mount Sinai. What all was going on at the mountain? Mm. Like, we just jump into Exodus 20 and we never finish reading. We just read the Ten Commandments of the book. What else was going on? Mm. Remember, the tongues of fire hit the disciples thousands of years later at this very day. Come on, brother. Verse 18. Yeah. And Mount Sinai was all together on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, mm. and the whole mount quaked greatly. See, we, and, that, and that's the and that's what the world about to see again. That's right. Feel the presence of the God in his body right here. Come on, brother. Verse 19. Yeah. And when the voice of the trumpet, trumpet sounded long, and waxed louder and louder. Ooh. Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. Um. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount. And the Lord called Moses on the top of the mount, and Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down and charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. Mm. And let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth upon them. Mm. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, but thou chargest us, saying, Set the bounds about the mouth, and sanctify them. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up. Thou and Aaron with thee, mm. but let not the priest and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. Mm. Verse 20. Mm. 
verse 25. 25. Oh yeah, verse 25. It's so small. <laughs> so Moses went down unto the people and spake unto them. Read 20. What Moses said. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Commandment one. Have no other gods before the Most High. That means that what? Knees number one, but Buddha is a close number two. Uh, is that what that means? No. Uh, no. Uh, and did you keep something up? Go ahead, bro. So if I got white guy Jesus in my mind and in my heart, that's a dumb God. There is another God. Yeah. There is another God that has ceremonies, rituals, and all that. But any, but any of not just not just him. In any other God. Right, right, right. So when the Lord saying have no other gods before me, he's saying he's not in competition with no other gods. That's it. So ain't no, you ought, you ought to be serving no other God but God in the Bible. So it's not cool. It's, it's going to be okay to be of a different color. Because, I mean, different gods, period. Buddha is dark skin. Right, right. Feel me? So any gods, period, other than the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You feel me? You have another God before him or in his presence. That's what that means. Okay. Have one of the gods in my presence. This is plural. Anybody else, else impossible. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else ain't worthy of praise. They're not the creative. So it's not a color thing. Right. Or flesh right. thing because Egypt had, what, 380 gods? Yeah. Oh, Six of them, them, you know, either bird head or look like them. And we know they were from the sea of the pants. So all of them was dark skinned. So not even a dark skin. God in your mind is not the God of Abraham. In their heart. Yeah, him Nay, especially him. Alright, where we at? Verse 3 again. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now remember the scene, because sometimes when you read, you forget the plot. Uh, yeah. You forget what's really happening. Remember, the mountain is quaking and on fire. Trumpets are blown. Right. Right? It's a very, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's something that had everybody scared. You feel me? So why he's reading this trip on how the Lord is saying, this is the Lord saying these commandments right here. Yeah. That's right. While everything is smoking, on fire, and quaking, and trumpets blowing, the Lord shout commandments. Yeah, come on, bro. Verse 6. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. See, he loved those, show mercy to those that love and keep his commandments. Love is the keeping of his commandments. That's right. Come on, bro. Verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Meaning, uh, meaning worthless. You don't both take the name or the authority or the character of the Lord your God in vain. So what he entrusts you with, you don't look at it like a scrap like Esau did. Esau looked at the covenant of the Lord like it was nothing. That's right. Some people say, well, that means you got to say his name this way or that way. But they yeah. can't find it. He tells the authority and character that I'm important to you today. Don't take this like it's nothing, or like it's something that fly by night. So take it serious. All right, come on. Take that out, Joe. Hey, bro. Yeah, take that out. Come on. Verse seven. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord would not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Well, you won't be guilty. I mean, you won't be guiltless. You will be guilty. Looking at the covenant of the Lord like it's not. That's right. Like it's scraps. Come on, brother. Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Mm. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Mm. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger. That is within thy gates. So, it, so the law apply to you and everybody that's a part of your household. That's right. That's right. Including your stranger. And his maid servants and men servants. Everybody has to serve your God. That's right. All right, come on, brother. Verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them is, 
and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. The Lord blessed it and hallowed it. It's not your Sabbath or my Sabbath. That's right. right. The most high I should bother. Right. All right, come on, bro. Verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. That's something we really need to learn to be. We have no understanding of that at all. None. All right, come on. Bro. Verse 13. <laughs> Thou shalt not kill, right? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Right. Nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. These commandments is given while the Lord on Mount Sinai. And this is the third month in which we are in right now. Remember, the mountain is on fire, it's quaking, and trumpets are blowing. All right, you got something? Can you repent if you kill someone, or is it like a certain, it's like a cutoff? Paul murdered people. Well, okay. You gotta be sincere. Right, anything, you, anything you repent of, you gotta be sincere. Like the John right. Baptist said, he said, bring forth uh, fruits and meat for repentance. So whatever you do, who's murdered, he can be forgiven. Moses so murdered. So, like, if it's an innocent person who just killed them, you can repent them? That's, that's, that, that, that's shady innocent blood. Your best bet is to repent of it and not do it again. Right. If you hold on to it, you cry, like, I was born with the ancient church thing, you're going to be in the grave shortly. <laughs> what did Moses do when he slayed that Egyptian? Slayed from Egypt. Well, he killed the Egyptian. But you can repent of anything except blasting that Holy Spirit and taking them off the peace. You know what I'm saying? But you do not want to be, see, that's something we got bad too. Shedding of innocent blue. That's right. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Shooting guns sideways, killing them. You feel me? And then that only reason the brother saw it is he got caught. You feel me? So it's a mindset thing to get Like if it's somebody who came to the truth and, you know, they were repenting and they know that that was wrong, so they're on the right path. Yeah, yeah, like caught. Right, they're 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 Hey, I'm saying, like, the same thing happened to Paul. He was murdering and shedding innocent blood. That's right. The Lord forgave him. He didn't shed innocent blood ever again. Right? So you can't repent, but the actions after you repent show if you should serve not. Right? You can't play games with the Lord. That's right. You can act. Your mouth can say whatever to us. Uh, no, I killed the whole inside out of the minute, though. All right. Feel me? But your actions after your repentance prove if you should serve not. The Lord knows what it is. All right, let's finish it, brother. Verse 18. Verse 2, but don't be confused with uh, Ecclesiastes 3. Ecclesiastes 3, when it said there was a time to kill. And David was a warrior for the Lord and had blood on his hands, like when he slayed Goliath. So there is righteous killing, you know, but the most high wish that, that no blood be shed because he said in Genesis 6, he grieved him to his heart that he had to put the wicked even to death. That's why I give him a long time to try to turn around because mm -hmm. he, don't, he don't want any of his creation to have to face death. Mm -hmm. But it comes a time when you, hey, if it's you at war, is, Israel's at war, Christ coming back to war, his sword is dipping with it. Right. You know, and that's mm -hmm. a, of, of the work he didn't put in. But it's a certain time for that. It's not just to be taken lightly and, and you know, off the right. everything off your lips. I kill that. I wish he would. I'll kill that. You know, and you're killing it for, for unrighteous reasons. You know, and, and most I don't want us to even have that thought process. That's why David couldn't build the temple. Even though he did, he, the one with Uriah was out of line, but he paid for that. But it was just the other blood that was on his hand. Righteous killing. But he didn't want people to think that this is how you have to be part of the kingdom. You got to kill somebody. You know, you got to be like David. He didn't want you to be like David like that. So that's why he told me your son going to do it in peace time. He's going to do it in war time. Right. No doubt. So the difference between righteous killing and shedding innocent blood. That's right. That would be murder. All right. Come on, bro. Verse 18. And all the people saw the thunder <clears throat> and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. <laughs> and they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. 
but let not God speak with us lest we die. That ain't you know the phrase of the Lord is serious. That's right. They say if we speak to him, we good as dead. So you be the mediator and don't speak to him. Right? We good as dead if we speak to him. That's right. I'm showing you they were scared of the most high. When, he, when his presence show up, it ain't that little house on the prairie vibration that everybody thinks. It's a serious thing. Whenever the Lord showed up or angel showed up, men was getting on their knees. Bow and roll. The angel had to tell you, man, get up on your bro. That's right. It's all good. But that lets you know the sight of them had to be like, oh! Right. Oh, hold on! What, what is this? Right. Alright, come on, bro. That's funny. And Moses said unto the people, fear not. For God has come to prove you. See that? The Lord that came to prove you, test you. Did you really die or not? That's right. Come on, bro. And that his fear may be before your faces that ye sin not. Mm -hmm. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. All right, that's it for that. Deuteronomy 33. Where we going next? All right. Deuteronomy 33, one of the brothers read 1 through 5. Get a little more detail into what else is going on at this month. In this third month, when the children of Israel received the commandments from the Most High. And we get all this and we lead all the way up to the New Testament. You see what the brothers got the clothing tongues of fire on the same exact day. So they was keeping a feast of God. The Pentecost is a feast, it's not a religion, it's not a doctrine. It's a feast day. Right. I say, brother, I'm Pentecostal. What is you, a feast day? How do you name yourself after a feast day? Right. <laughs> a feast day is not a nationality, it ain't even a philosophy. It's a right. feast day. Right. right. And like everybody here, they have themselves pass over. Right. right. Or like last night, uh, Jay, I was like, that's it. You know, we saw about the last night. I said, that's just like me starting a, a feast called the Thanksgiving religion. Right. You know, don't make sure the feast. Don't make sense. Okay, let's get this. Deuteronomy 33. Deuteronomy 33. It's called Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks. Seven weeks after Passover. That's what we at. And this is when Israel received the law from the Most High. So, of course, it's commemorated. All right, come on, brother. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1. And this is the blessing. Wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them and shined forth from Mount Aram. And he came with 10,000 of saints. He came with who? 10,000 of saints from his right hand. Right? Went a fiery law for them. A fiery law went from his right hand. And it said the Lord showed up on that mountain with 10,000 of saints. Mm -hmm. uh, but we just read Moses and Aaron were the only ones up in the mountain. Two weeks. Uh, who else is with the Lord? 10,000 10, of them angels. Mm -hmm. And it said a fiery law. Remember that. Mountain was on fire, wasn't it? Uh, a fiery law. Leading up to these fiery tongues in Acts chapter 2. Same day. A fiery law. Read that verse 2 again, bro. Read the from the top Read verse 1. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Sarah unto them. He shined forth from Mount Moriah, and he came with 10,000 of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. From his right hand went a what? Fiery law for them. Who's at the right hand of Moses? Christ. Ah. Okay, come on. Yeah, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. And they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy word. Receive of what? Of thy word. Mm. Words come off tongues. We keep saying that. Remember that. Yeah. Come on, bro. Moses commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. Mm. And he was king in Jeshurun. When the heads of the people of the tribes of Israel were gathered together. Jump down to verse 26 and 29. Uh -huh. Verse 26. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun. Jeshurun is another way to say Israel. All right, come on, brother. Who rideth upon the heaven in thy help and in thy excellency on the sky. In his excellency. In his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge. Mm. 
and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. <laughs> Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon the land of corn and wine. Also his heaven shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the law. Thy shield of thy help. The what? The shield of thy help. So the shield of Israel is, is what? The law. The Lord. The Lord. It's not that what they call a six-point star. Right? right. The shield of David. The shield of Israel is the most high. All right, come on, bro. And who is thy and who is the sword of thy excellency? And thy enemy shall be found liars unto thee. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. Now, check this out. We got a scripture we're going to go to in the New Testament next in Corinthians. And it talks about how he was baptized in the Moses. Mm -hmm. right. Now, the question for the crowd is, how is that possible? Well, we didn't get wet even either. Mm -hmm. What was the baptism? The word. Let's read that real quick. First Corinthians 10 is where we're going next. So, hold your spot right there in Deuteronomy 33. Verse, uh, verse uh, 2 through 5. Yeah, so I just want to reiterate right there. First Corinthians 10, what we're going next. Moses said we got a fiery law from the right hand of the most high. A fiery law. First Corinthians 10th chapter. First Corinthians 10th chapter. Y'all bear with us, we're just leading on up. Commemorating receiving the law, the fiery law at Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 10. Verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 1. Moreover, brother, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Now when you look that word baptize up right there in the script, it's baptismo, it's in the Greek 907, and it means to be overwhelmed. One of the definitions is water baptism. Be over submerged in water. But if they didn't get wet leaving Egypt, what were they overwhelmed with? Huh? Who's that? Spirit? Yeah. Earth? Right. Was Christ? What was they baptized into? Because they were just thinking get dumped in water. Right? Now, Lord say, well, John the Baptist said, I baptize in water for this one coming after me. They baptized in the fire. Right? So how were they baptized in Moses if it wasn't water? It wasn't. Fire. Didn't, it, didn't Moses teach us a law? Commandments? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. A fiery law? Yeah. And they say, yeah, Lord, we will do it. Whatever you say, we gonna do that. going to do whatever you say. Okay. Right. right? They were overwhelmed or baptized in the commandments of the Most High. Yeah. And the law of God or the word of God is uh, connected with fire. Right. A fiery law. Read on down the first of uh, four. And were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea mm -hmm. and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For well, they drank of that spiritual rock that blow that followed them, right? And that rock was Christ. All right, jump back to Deuteronomy 33 one more time. Read that one slide. Deuteronomy chapter 33. We're leading up to we getting up to Christ's baptism. Baptism of fire. Brother, what is that? All right, come on, brother. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1. One more time. 
And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Sarah unto them. He shined forth from Mount Moran, and he came with ten thousand of his saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. Yet he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. And they sat down at thy feet. They what? Sat down at thy feet. Come on. Everyone shall receive of thy words. Everyone shall receive of thy words. Come on. Moses commanded us a law. A what? A law. So to be baptized in the Moses, you got to be taught the law. Come on, bro. Even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. And he was king in Jeshurun. When the heads of the people and the tribes of Israel were gathered together. Alright, that's it for that. Now we go to this apocryphal, y'all. Second Ezra. Second Ezra, the third chapter. Ezra going back over the same thing. I won't receive the law. Second Ezra chapter 3. That's in the apocryphal. Uh, y'all got the apocryphal down for it, brother. Uh, you get the uh, King James, uh, the original King James. Uh, uh, Bible that was authorized to be translated here in 1611. It has the, uh, the, the Apocrypha, which means hidden in secret books, uh, contained between the Old and New Testament. You can also get it separate. Y'all don't have it, we'll put it up on the screen. Yeah. So Apocrypha is not a, another book, it's a title. It just means hidden in secret. Thank you, sir. You should go down here to the phone.
Right. Earthquake, wind, and cold. Thou mightest get along to the seeds of Jacob. And diligence. Mm. That means you continue constantly on right. to the generation of Israel. Verse 20. And yet tookest thou not away from them a wicked heart, that thy, that thy law might bring forth fruit in them. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed and was overcome. And so be all they that are born of him. All right, we in second Ezra, right? Jump over to chapter 14. Let's reread about what happened with Moses. How was Moses able to write about all these things and he wasn't there? What happened? The Bible is happening with it. Can, can the story be older than the author? Some people say. Yeah. yeah. You're on 14, chapter 14, yeah. Chapter 14, start with right. We're leading up, y'all. We're going to be right there. We want to show y'all what all was going on. Start at verse 1. Start at verse 1. This is Ezra when he's in captivity in Babylon. And the Lord just commissioned him to rewrite our history. Because many times people had attempted to burn the scrolls of God. That's right. But his word never come back void, so he'll put the spirit back out on men. And then they'll write down everything that happened. So when he's going to go over what happened with Moses when he was on the mountain of God for 40 days and 40 nights. He didn't just get 10 commandments. He got a whole bunch of stuff up on that mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Let's start at verse 1. Let's start there. And it came to pass upon the third day, I sat under a oak, and behold, there came a voice out of the bush over against me, and said, Ezra, Ezra. And I said, Here I am, Lord. Here am I, Lord. And I stood upon my feet. Then he said unto me, In the bush I did manifest, manifest and reveal myself unto Moses, and talk with him, when my people served in Egypt. And I sent him, and led my people out of Egypt, and brought him up to the mountain of Sinai, where I held him by me a long season, and told him many wondrous things, and showed him the secrets of the time come. And the end, right. and commanded him, saying, so he, don't, he didn't only get a fiery law, he got the history of the whole world. Mm. The secrets of the times and everything. That's how Moses was able to write about what happened in the Garden of Eden and he wasn't there. Genesis, the first book of Moses. When he was on the mountain with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights, the Lord didn't just give him the law, he gave him the history of the whole world. That's right. That's what it says, the secrets of the times in verse 5. And told him many wondrous things. And showed him the secrets of the times and the end, and commanded him, saying, Come on, brother. Commanded him, saying, These words shalt thou declare, and these shalt thou hide. And now I say unto thee, that thou lay up in thy heart the signs that I have showed, and the dreams that thou hast seen, and the interpretations which thou hast heard. But thou shalt be taken away from all, and from henceforth. Thou shalt remain with my son, and with such as be like thee, until the times be ended. For the world has lost its youth, and the times begin to wax old. Right out. The world is getting weaker and weaker. All right. Come on, brother. For the world is divided into twelve parts, and the ten parts of it are gone already, and half the tenth part. And there remaineth that which is after the half of the ten part. Now therefore set thy house in order. See what he told Ezra? Being all this about to hit, set your house in order. Mm -hmm. People don't want to hear that today, but he told Ezra, get your house together. Right. Set your house in order. Come on, bro. And reprove thy people. Do what? Reprove thy people. That ain't an easy job. No. People get mad at you, you think you're better than everybody, and you're right. judging me. And right. right. He said, Reprove your people. Set your house in order, let your people know where they're going off at. All right, come on, brother. Comfort such of them as be in trouble. Right. And now renounce corruption. Verse 14. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. See, we say let go, mm -hmm. get rid of all those corn and mortal thoughts. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. Come on, brother. Cast away the burdens of man. 
put off now the weak nature. The weak nature. The weak nature. The weak nature. The weak weak. You feel me? Like, I mean, you all, we all got things we battle with, but if yo, if what you weak at is conquering you, right, you ain't complaining. Lord, right. that's weak nature. Right. Put that off. Let that go. If you trying to be with me, set your house in order, reprove your people, and guess what? Let go of that weak nature. All right, come on, brother. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, and haste thee to, to flee from these times. See, that's what you're looking for the end. Haste thee to flee from these times. Huh? I'm going to look up and your child teacher going to be a transsexual in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. right. It's getting more and more right. weak. That's right. what I tell right. you. That. The earth has lost its youth. Everything is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. He told him to get your house together, reprove your people.